Hey everybody and welcome on back to Minecraft today. We are taking a look at all of the new Minecraft 1.14 blocks as they've been out for now quite a few months. I feel like I've finally been able to come up with quite a few builds that I like to use and different ways I like to use these blocks. So with that, let's get into it. The way we are going to be going through this is one block at a time, looking at quite a few different ideas of how to use that, then moving on to the next one. The first one starting out here is the loom. This is a very cool block where it has a lot of unique features to it. One thing I actually love using it for the most is a type of a paneling for the inside or outside of a building, and I think it can look really cool. They're kind of hard to craft, but you could use quite a few of them. Next one up over here is making a piano. You can use the front of these guys and it looks a little bit like a piano block, which is pretty freaking awesome. Then moving on from that one here, the next one up is a doormat. Something about this being down here, if you use two pointing into each other, they don't line up perfectly, but it looks like a really great doormat and it adds a little bit of attention here to the base. Don't pay attention to the... Don't pay attention to the mixed up doors, just the doormat. I feel like we really need to find a way to have a red balloon of some sort here because this looks like a great little sewers grate almost or something like that. Let's see if we can make one. Maybe what we can do is a little iron bar right here and then do a flower pot on top of that. Is that a little red balloon? I don't know. I think we'll leave that guy as is for now. After that, one thing I really enjoy using with this is actually making it look like this is some sort of an um, empty bookshelf. So you have all of your bookcases lined out here and you can see how the lines line up pretty well. So you can make it look like an empty one, which I think is awesome. I think it's a great way to do it. Also, these can be great kitchen cabinets. So you have your fully functional kitchen in here, got all your barrels for drawers and things like that. And to mix it up so you don't just have barrels everywhere, you can have the looms up there turning around to the backside of it. I know most of these were using the back of the loom. Using the front of the loom here again, you can use it as a bit of a headboard for your bed. It just adds that extra little bit of detail right on top of it. Next up, the barrel. One thing I absolutely love about the barrel here is that you can use it on a column as part of your docks, make it look like it's an iron bound portion that's really strengthened and that's something where they could tie the ropes around and not worry about harming the wood too much in it. Another great use of the barrel here is actually as a bit of a window frame. So in, instead of using the trapdoor shutters and you want to have some way to frame your window and make it draw more attention to it, just use a barrel and it looks really, really nice. And another way to use them as a pillar right here is just at the bottom and the top and it helps to strengthen it out. That might be for an interior of like a grand Nordic church or something like that. Then of course, the keg. I can't, I can't be the one who claims the original design for this one right here, but I figured it was worth noting. Just using some scaffolding, barrel, and then into a flower pot being a cup. This one I really like, and if you needed a lot of way to have a bunch of storage just built into your area and not really worry about it too much, you can make a water tower out of a bunch of barrels. So inside the middle of this one, you might just fill the entire thing with a bunch of water in there, and then that's going to destroy everything that we built up down there. That's just perfect. Yeah, but it works out really well. It does that and you can add these extra detail bits down here with the hopper and the line of the nether brick fences and into a bit of a cauldron down there to be collecting all your water. Now the barrel of course is a storage block in the game and before we didn't really have a great way to make crates full of items. So what I've come up with here is using a barrel with a item frame with a gold ingot on top of it and a gold pressure plate makes it look like you have a barrel full of gold. And I think that's really awesome. Fancy playing on SMP servers? Maybe you need a mailbox so people can leave you some gifts and you don't want to just leave a chest out in front of your place. So build a little mailbox right here. You can flip it up when you have mail, no mail, got mail. Let's see what's inside. And it works great. I think those ones are awesome. Next up here, we are looking at the smoker block, which has a great front to it. Very detailed with that little thing. You can make it look like a face or a chest plate or something like that. But me, of course, I like to use the back of the blocks here to hide in some extra details and bring new texture blocks that we can use inside of the game. So you can use it as a form of a pillar, maybe inside of a dwarven base or something like that. If you want to get a bunch of detailed dwarven stuff going on, then also robots have been all the rave recently. So you can use this as like the power source with the observer being the face of the robot. And this guy could be walking around. Maybe he's a guard and he wheels around on his little grindstone right there. Next one being one of my absolute favorites is using the smoker as part of a furnace of sorts. This one right here, I figured would be like an outdoor bakery of sorts. You have all your smoker, you could open these up and these are basically ovens to bake your cakes in and things like that and put all them in here. Then you get the cakes on the outside. I think it works out really, really great. And you can just mash a bunch of different materials around or things that they might be using elsewhere to help bake the cake. And it works out great using the smoker inside of there and then just a few campfires hidden under the top of these slabs. And if you use it only on one side, it actually looks a bit more detailed than it just being a giant column of smoke. 
Another way you, to use the smoker for cooking is you can use it in the form of a barbecue. So the top of it can be a little weird with that open point right there. But I think if you cover it up with like a detector rail or a regular rail, it can actually look really sweet as a sort of a burner type function where you could put a pot on there and cook. This would be a much more of a modern one, but I think it works out great. And you can have some drawers that might open and close, store all your propane and everything in there. I think you get an awesome backyard picnic barbecue going on. Next up, we are looking here at the blast furnace, which is a a super sweet block. If you want to make some more grates like we were talking about previously with the whole it theme red balloon and all that stuff, you could do a reverse one here. So you're inside of an area, maybe you're going for like a military base or something. You could throw these bordering the wall up there and cover in just some stone right in here and it can actually look pretty freaking awesome. So if you just fill all this right in here like that, you got your underground base perfectly laid out right there. You can also use the reverse of it using the top half and it actually looks really cool as a form of a bottom of it. And it's a much darker one than that is. So maybe we use some different blocks and stone up there though. On top of that also, the blast furnace here is one of my favorite blocks to use for a ceiling and a floor because we get this brand new unique texture and we would have so many villagers with the armor profession everywhere in this case. It'd be so freaking awesome and they're not too hard to craft. So you could pretty easily do something like that. Moving on back to the robot theme that we're talking about, you could use this as a bit of a face plate or something like that for a robot because you got the eyeball and the eyeball and then the mouth right there. Maybe this guy goes around punching things or breaking down some walls or something like that. I don't know. I thought he was pretty cool. Being a blast furnace, I thought it would fit really well in a sport in a type of like a sports car or a race car. So we got that guy hidden back there as the engine in the back of the car. Then up here, we have all of the just cool mechanics behind it. And it looks super sweet. I love this car design. Thought it was really cool and really fun to come up with. I don't know how we'd get in there. So if anybody has any ideas on how we can actually get inside the car, that's probably the next best thing. Maybe we do this. Oh, now we are ready to go. This is a remake of a much, much older car design that probably I think originated back in the early days of 1.4, 1.5, of making an old school town car. And this time I thought it'd be really sweet to bring the engine in here and update this thing to being in our current standards of building. So instead of torches sitting on the front, we got our lanterns, we got our blast furnace there as the engine source. And overall, it looks really freaking sweet. And we got one back here on the end. So maybe it's a double engine car. Don't know quite how that would work, but I thought it was pretty cool. And a repeat of what we're doing with the smoker design, you can also use the blast furnace here as a form of a pillar block. And it looks really great on the backside. Next up, we're going to be looking at the cartography table, which is one of my favorite and least favorite blocks in the new update. Most favorite because of this right here. It's the only block in the game that has vertical slabs going right, or vertical lines along wood texture. All of our wood textures go left to right, whereas these guys go up and down, and it's awesome. It's so freaking cool. It's very usable in this case right here. And then you go around to the backside, and it's very much not usable. And these are not rotatable. So for example, say you have this wall right here, then you need to turn it. You want to do the same thing or a different pattern. You're instantly looking at something like this, but from the other side, it looks awesome. Like, look at that. That'd be so cool to be able to use. Same thing with this right here. So you can't really use this on all of your different walls and you can't use it on one thick walls. But I think it's a cool idea to be able to mess around with if you can find a way to use it. Outside of that, the cartography table looks great being used amongst a bunch of dark oak to make a sort of a map room table. Maybe you're trying to plot out the area and this thing is pretty out of date, but you know, that's, that's looking pretty good so far. Our fletching table is up next here, and I find this one being about the same usability as what we were looking at for that guy over there with the cartography table. The color of it being a bit lighter than the birch color that we now have within Minecraft, it looks a little weird. So maybe you can make a little archery station using some sandstone and things like that. You can have all of your bows and arrows in here. You could do as a form of a shop, but it really doesn't do much inside the game yet either. At the top of it, on the side of it, it feels like an archery block. So right there, we got our bow and our arrow. Now at the top of it, it looks like we have like a a feather right here, and this looks like a pen. So it seems kind of weird being able to have that, but you could use this as a form of a table, a writing station, a desk of some sort, if there was only a way to get rid of that without just covering it with a sign. Now back to one of the much, much more useful blocks and new models in the game being the grindstone. You can place this in multiple directions. You can do all you want with it. And it's freaking awesome. I absolutely love this guy. It's very cool. It's very fun to mess around with. First idea we have here is pretty obvious, turning it upside down. It can be some great wheels for a cart if you're trying to make some Flintstones carts. 
I think it works out pretty perfectly for that. It's probably the best thing we have here. You can also use it as a form of like a scarecrow or something like that mixed out in your fields or going back to the robots, we have like a super old school robot here that might be able to roll around on its wheel. Another great aspect of it is it looks kind of like a pulley. So if you're trying to use a lift of some sort, maybe we're trying to make something fancy ornamental light fixture or lantern or something like that going on here. You can have it on four, all four different sides. And maybe if there's some way to hook a wire or a rope up to it, you could wheel them up and down and bring these guys down to a level where you could just fix them. Same thing with this right here, probably a much better idea of it, but this feels like it's holding up all of these by like a chain or something like that. So if we had a way to make it so that our grindstone right here was able to spin and these guys could go up and down and we could fix them and not have to climb up there and ladder, that would be awesome. Another great part of the grindstones here being in the same pulley system, throw it at the top of a well that you're making in your little medieval village or something like that, having a composter or something else down here, it can be a great design for getting up and down inside of a well and make it look a lot more usable instead of before we basically would just sit here with something like that. Speaking of your little villages, you're probably gonna have a bunch of farmers out there, so maybe you need a wheelbarrow. You can use the grindstone on the front, then a hopper going into the grindstone, and a little fence gate on the back of it, and it looks like you can be wheeling this around. I think we can, I think we can get some work done on this guy right here. Another version of that is just using a cauldron there in the middle. Feels a little bit more substantial, whereas this one is actually completely floating off the top of it. This thing is actually touching the ground here. Next up, you could use this as a form of a chain. So if you take them right here and you alternate them going left, turning it once over every single time where you're going up, looks like a great chain. Another way to do it here is to make more of a link system and having ones going into each other. So we basically place them upside down and it looks really sweet and feels much more like a chain than ever, anything else we can really do in the game right now. This one right here, I absolutely love. It makes me, re it reminds me of like a condor or something flying over the landscape. Throw this up really, really high in the sky above your building and it'll look like you have a bird flying up there crazy, crazy high and I absolutely love it. Using grindstone for a head, then we just got a little bit of a body here with some wings with carpet. And maybe if you do this in an adventure map, throw an elytra on top of it. So somebody actually takes the time to get all the way up here, they can fly on back down. Another one that I absolutely love this little guy here. I came up with this a little while ago. I figure we had to include it here to this is it spurred the idea for that one is we have our little baby mini dragon flying around. He's so cool. The smithing table being one of the blocks in the game that still has no use to it as far as the professions. They promised this in the next update. So we'll see what happens here. So right now it is purely decorative. And one of the best ways to use it to decorate is if you're making a giant dwarven cave base or something and you're tired of stone being on stone, being on stone with a ceiling of stone and a floor of stone. Maybe add in some grindstones and you get a bit, or no, sorry, not grindstones, smithing tables, and you get a bit of a difference in the texture and color of everything. And I think it can really help out with making the area feel a lot different from the ceiling all the way up to the floor. It's not just going to be the same color. Then speaking of the ceiling, coming in here, the bottom of this block is a very weird texture. I absolutely love it. I think it's great. And look at that. It has that kind of like red and the gray pattern going on with it. Feels very tiled, very like a mosaic ceiling almost. I think it's awesome. So we're using it here as a form of an archway bridge, something like that inside of a garden for like an Asian style build or something. I think it works out really great. The only problem with these, as you can see here, is we got to hide the sides of them. Otherwise it looks like you have tools everywhere. So you don't really want to have that stuff sticking out here. So you do have to hide the, every single side of it. I find glazed terracotta to be one of the harder things in the game to work with. And looking at it right here with the gray glazed terracotta, you can actually use a smithing table along the side of it. And all of it actually fits really well together, which I think is pretty awesome. One of the lethal and most dangerous blocks in the entire game. If you touch the saw, you're basically going to die. It is the stone cutter. No, I'm just kidding. These things are harmless. It's very much a lie. And they are a very cool block. And I absolutely love using them. For one thing here is they look great as a sort of a rail for like a probably better as a futuristic train here. But in this case, we're going back to the Wild West with one of these old old school trains here, which I think is very, very cool. And going back to using our grindstones here as well, we're using that chain locking method here of creating this sort of wheels on the side of the train that would be going round and round. And it's so, so cool. We got some campfires hidden up in there, which are adding a lot of extra detail in this guy. And we've got a whole control system in here so you can have the conductors making the train go. Another feature for these, which is very much not super usable, but it's a cool one to note, is that the side of the block texture here 
is if you use a slab, you actually cut off just one pixel there, so you can't see the blade at all for the bottom half. So you can make a very cool trim for a cave base of sorts, or in this case, some type of magical dude or potion brewer who, hobbit guy living inside of a cave inside of the mountain, and it works really, really well. Another thing to note is they basically took the stone slab texture, turned it on its side, and darkened it to create our stone cutter texture on the bottom, which I think is absolutely awesome. And you make some really high, high detailed ceilings like this for probably some more interior places. I really wish we could use this on the floor, but it's not really possible to flip these guys upside down right now. Trying to make a jail cell somewhere or a jail anywhere, you could use these on top of your wall to make it look like you're keeping the prisoners or keeping whoever out of it and you just have this whole defensive wall. Kind of thinking like a barbed wire fence of sorts, but in Minecraft speak. Moving on to the campfire, which I think is a great block. We're going to be doing one section here on the lit campfire and then one down there on the unlit campfire. And this guy right here, as we've touched on it so far, works great as like a chimney smoke or something coming out of different objects and things like that. So I don't want to revisit those again to double up on them and just waste time here. But if you're trying to make like a swamp of something, and you add in a bunch of your wither roses, which give off a little bit of an animated effect going on there. You can bring in some soul sand and get some bubble columns going and all those things. And then maybe it look like the swamp is steaming and adding a bunch of campfires in there as well. And it can look really, really cool and really, really ominous. And I think it's great. I would love to be able to use that inside of my own world soon. Of course, as it is emitting smoke everywhere, it's great for lava fields. So if we have a bunch of lava down here, surrounded by some magma blocks, and then making a bunch of stone along the outside of Mace. As mentioned, next up was gonna be looking at the unlit campfire. And this is one of my new favorite things in the game because it's something where you can see through the bottom of it with a slight change, change to the texture pack. You can get rid of that unlit coals there and it looks great. It looks really, really cool. I absolutely love it. And it's so fun to work with here. So we can make like a bridge across a jungle river of sorts inside of a bamboo forest here. And it looks very cool. It has so many uses for it. And then coming out over here, you can use it as like a pergola, I th believe they're called. So you can still see a bit of sunlight going through the top of it. And it looks very, very cool. And apparently there's a bit of a glitch with the texture. Uh, I'll be sure to fix that one. But it's just a really cool way to look up and see everything like that. And be able to just kind of look through everything. And I think it does a really great job for us here. You can also use it inside of a market stall of sorts, and I think it does a great job here being a roof to a market stall. So you, if you want to get away from using just wooden slabs or carpet or four, full blocks of wool as it gets kind of old after a while, come to here and use a bunch of these guys. The only problem with these is you have to place down all of the lit campfires like this and do all of those throughout here. And then you got to come back and pour water in each and every single one of them. So it can take some time to do, but I think the effect is really, really worthwhile. Think of this raft just found out in the middle of the ocean, and we got a skeleton head here, maybe by the name of Wilson here, just trekking along all alone, got a few bits of storage, a fishing rod, and you're trying to find your way across a giant ocean. I think that's absolutely awesome. The campfire, unlit campfire here, can make a great form for the raft, so you can mix it up instead of just using your trap doors, and I think it gives a lot of extra life and texture to it. We ran into the village here, so I couldn't really keep this one lined up directly, but the next one is an empty pallet. So if you stack up a bunch of things like this, so we have a bunch of our crates, maybe do some barrels, maybe some chests, maybe some blocks of diamond, whatever you wanna do, then leave some open spaces and just put four or whatever size you're using for these. So a two by two or a three by three or whatever it might be. And it just looks, it looks like an empty pallet waiting for stuff to be placed on top of it, which I think is a really cool idea. The lectern here has quite a few uses to it, which I think are awesome. It's some of it, the great features it can be used for redstone and all those things. But one of my favorite ones is we can now create a pretty half decent chair inside of Minecraft just by doing that. Or you can even place it right on top of this right here and make it a little bit closer and it's not super disconnected, and you got a bit of a chair that you can sit on here. And this villager over here absolutely loves our next format for these, which is using it as a form of a display case. Because the top of the block model comes out of it, so it actually leads into the next block, 
And being coming out of the top of the block, you're still able to place some item frames down at the, no, I said get out of here. You can still place the item frames down and you can place the weapons on top of that and it looks really cool. Like this almost a type of a display case of sorts showing off weapons of old. The berry bush, I've had quite a lot of experience with just placing around in copious amounts and I think it's one of the best things ever. One, it is a great defense against pillagers. So if you wanna bring these and just fill them all the way in front of your wall and things like that, you don't have to worry about pillagers coming back in here and just standing right here and just staying there forever because one, they don't really walk through the berries. And then once the berries are fully grown up like these guys, you actually take damage as soon as you touch them. So berries are a great source of defense for protecting your villagers. And then on the inside, probably don't place them down because as that villager, wherever he is now, probably back on top of my bookshelf, he really likes to get in the way and run in stupid places. So they just kind of walk into berries. So avoid those ones. Moving on for another thing for the berries here, I love building vineyards and typically how I build vineyards is with these dark oak leaves going all the which way across here making very bulky vines super overgrown because that's kind of the style I like to go for. But you can also use them right like these guys and it works out really, really well for making things look super sweet. You can just plant a bunch of berries along the way. Over here, I feel like a lot of people constantly, as far as the top of these inside of your windows, inside of your villages and everything like that, people will constantly put like flower boxes and things like that, but the flowers are all pretty small inside of Minecraft. So I like doing the berry bushes up here because it it's much more full. And when you're walking along the street, it feels very green up there and you don't have to fill in the whole thing with like a leaf block or something. You can just do one of these guys and it works out really, really well. So coming around here, it adds a lot of extra life and just variation and texture and depth into our build here. Our bell is something that you can easily use inside of a watchtower and it does a great job of that. But another thing here is it's the only small gold block that we have in the game. Like if you look up gold, anything right here, like we got the block of gold, we got ingots and we got gold ore, but there's not a whole lot else that we can really use here. So if you wanna have a cool fireplace ornament of sorts, you can just go ahead and take that bell and throw it right up there and it looks great, especially below that painting. I think it's really awesome. Another thing to note on this one is you can make a shag carpet in Minecraft now using dead coral fans. As we mentioned about bell towers, this one I wanted to bring up very quickly as we're moving throughout here from our survival world, you can actually make really cool bell tower designs using the bell, of course, as a way of warning your villagers of oncoming threats and revealing where the pillagers are. So you can make some really cool functionality pieces like this guy right here, just kind of showcasing that this thing could spin around using some fences and iron bars and all that stuff. It works out pretty great. Next up, the composter. A great block can give you a lot of bone meal at a very, very terrible rate. It can be used for quite a few different things inside of the, our Minecraft worlds here. One important one to note is that you can actually kind of use it for a palm tree here, just using it as a bark block as part of a tree, and it looks really cool standing out here. Probably better from a distance because as soon as you get up close to it with the base being like that and all that stuff and just the empty top to it right there, Tends to look a little weird, but from a distance, it actually looks pretty cool and believable. Another one great over here is that you can use it as a form of like a beehive almost. You can just put this thing on top of it and it looks a bit like a beehive going around, just kind of like with that weirdish uh, yellowy almost texture on the back of there, like it's a yellowy wood. Next one coming over here, in the middle of a forest, we always need our outhouses. And there's not really a great way to do this inside of Minecraft, but now, we have the composter. You can throw a few things in there. You can plop that guy down and close it off, but maybe you gotta use the bathroom. So you can just come in here and just, you know, do your thing and get all that stuff, close it back down and leave. We've already talked about this one a little bit here, but I wanted to note it again, just kind of as we're going throughout, is the composter can be a great thing to be using for if you're trying to make a well design as a way to bring up water and have a bunch of things like that. We can't quite fill it like the water or like we can with the cauldron here but I think it looks probably better as a blocky one instead of having these little legs on the base of it. Last but definitely not least here, probably being my, my favorite block of the new 1.14 update, newish 1.14 update, is the scaffolding. Scaffolding is a great thing. It can be a chair. You can use it as a picnic table, which is awesome. You can just have a little thing like, right like there, have your own picnic out in the middle of nowhere. Super easy to take down, and it opens up a lot of doors for things right here. For example, you're walking through this place, you're in the middle of the snow, nothing's really going on, and then you can come over here and have a secret base. I think it's absolutely awesome being able to hide snow layers on top of scaffolding. It can only be a one thick snow layer, but you can make these awesome little secret bases right here, use these as elevators and just different ways to get around. Fortunately, it does not work with carpet, but it does a great job here with snow layers, which I think is very cool. 
And then coming over here to another one, which I think is super awesome, is we can make a chicken coop using the legs being scaffolding, and that allows the chickens to still actually walk underneath the coop itself and poke their heads out of the side right like that. And I think it's super cool. I think it's a great way that you can add some more life into these ones. And one detail that I love to add in here always to the chicken coops is that guy right there. You can see we got an item frame with a dead crawl fan sitting on top of it with an egg sitting in the item frame. And it gives a great believable way that we can have that. And also in the middle of these, hide a hopper in there. Then you actually get quite a few eggs over time. This one here I think is something very, very cool and I came across pretty recently is that you can actually come in through here, use a bunch of scaffolding as a way of building up your base of your deck or whatever, some type of house you're building. And it can look like a great way of supporting it from down below without being full blocks everywhere. Then you come inside of this guy and see you wanna have another secret base. See, scaffolding is pretty great. Is you can have a doorway right there in the bottom underneath your top doorway. And that's how you can get into your secret basement. Thank you all so much for checking out today's episode. I hope some of you found these designs new and interesting and useful inside of your own Minecraft worlds. If you have any other designs that are need to know basis for these new Minecraft 1.14 blocks or anything else that we should try and explore some more, be sure to let us know down in the comments below. That would be awesome to be taking a look at all of those. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching today's episode. That is going to do it for me. So be, please be sure to hit that like button if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you are new. And I will catch you on the flip side.